What is full disclosure and do you really need it? This episode today is in response to the thousands of questions we've had in regards to disclosure. And we've done an episode on disclosure before about the nitty gritty of what needs to be disclosed. But today we're going to be talking about this term full disclosure and what happens if you don't have it. Do you go to mediation? Do you go to a trial? And do you really need it? Welcome, Mum. Hello, Laura. Hi, everyone. Why is this one of the most commonly asked questions when it comes to property? Full disclosure. What does it mean? The problem with the words full disclosure, that term, is it means different things to different people. And that's where the debates come in, right? The court talks about disclosure, and that would be the disclosure necessary for the court to settle the dispute. So it might be things relating to the value of a house or a business. It might be bank statements, super, that sort of stuff. But some people have a dispute that makes them suspicious, perhaps, of what's gone on before, or they don't really have any idea of where certain lumps of money have gone throughout the marriage. And they're wanting every last one of those documents so that they can track this down. Right. So people just get maybe a little obsessed? A little bee in their bonnet. Right. The full disclosure. Okay. Yeah. So, and and that can be rightly or wrongly, depending on your case. That's right. And, And... It can be really, really important to someone, Mm -hmm. but when they consider it dispassionately, like try not to be too um, emotional about it, you think they may think, oh, actually, I don't need to see that bank statement from 1999. Mm. You know, I know we bought the house, so I assume the money came in. Sometimes the stuff you're trying to get evidence of, you're better off without the evidence. Right. Because if it's something that your ex-partner has put into the relationship, and they're not talking about it, well, don't you talk about it. Yeah. It's their problem. So, yeah. Right. So just let's do a quick rundown before we get into the nitty-gritty of this whole full disclosure debacle. Mm. But obviously we have a disclosure checklist that, that's loosely based off what the uh, rules, the rules uh, are. You can go onto our website, www.thedivorcecourse.com.au and go into the free resources and go to the disclosure checklist where we give you a list and you can go through and tick it once you've done it. Of course, in our, in our course, you can, we show you a plan on how to do that as well mm. in, in legally sending it through. But So when it comes to three most recent tax returns, a completed superannuation information form, bank statements for the last 12 months, share statements of investments, pay slips for the last three months, details of any government payment, and a copy of any relevant medical reports for yourself. And then it keeps going, credit card statement, lease documents, rental agreements, personal loans, finance documents, car loan, contracts, et cetera, et cetera. So it goes on. It seems like a lot. It does seem like a lot. I was just thinking about that. If you said to me, because we're sat in my office, right? Mm. And if you said, mum, go and get This, 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 and this, and this. Well, it's going to be days, isn't it? And most of it will be electronic. And some of it, it's so old, I can't remember. So that's the first uphill battle for doing full disclosure in inverted commas because basically... It's a two-way street. The only person that I can think of that would have all of that at their fingertips is one of the most highly organized person on the internet. You know what I mean? That yes. has it all categorized, color coded, and do you and know any like that? I don't. Well, on the internet, they pretend they do. I don't know whether it's real. <laughs> Maybe the I once met a man who wrote down everything he ate, and he'd been writing it down for fourteen years. It is bizarre. I know. I said to him, "Is anybody reading it?" And he goes, "I do." Okay. So there you go. So some people get into that. It right. might kind of tidy with me. Maybe you can do. So but most of us don't have that stuff. So what you're saying is this term full disclosure is really putting the brakes on a lot of people's settlements. So it's what's getting in the way between them getting settled and them not. And also racking up the bills. Well, it does rack up the bills. And it's a two-way street mm-hmm. that you're supposed to do disclosure and if the other side gets on the full disclosure bandwagon, they'll be riding you for that. Um, and you want them to do full disclosure. And before you know it, you've got like $20,000 worth of paperwork exchanged, mm. hardly any of which is actually relevant to your case. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to see getting rid of the words full disclosure. Right. And I would like disclosure instead. I was, that's what I was going about to say. What would you like it to be called instead? Yeah. Well, I used to call it discovery. Right. Because, and that's what we did in court. We used to call it discovery. And it meant that if they wouldn't tell you, you could find out. Mm. And there often are ways to find out. You might not know, for instance, where some money went out of your joint account years ago or since separation, but you can see where it went. That's all you need to show the court. Mm. You don't have to 
show where it went. You said, this money's gone. It's not mine. He drew it out. She drew it out. And, yeah. you know, so, I want it back. so people with, they need to keep a focus and lawyers do it. Lawyers do it because it's easy mm. to write a letter and go, but you haven't given us full disclosure about this. And, and then, you know, it's like tick for tat. And when you get to court, the judge's eyes get rolling because everyone's been arguing about these documents and no one's gotten into the decision of, no one can actually explain why they need a document. Okay. Right? And I'm just going to put as a disclaimer here, we're not telling people not to do full disclosure. No. What we're saying is follow what your lawyer says, follow what the people are asking for, do what you need to do, what's legally right for you in your position. But mum, what is the court's opinion on disclosure? Okay. So they sent out their central practice direction a couple of years ago, and it's pretty clear about what's expected of people. And so it's an odd way to answer, I guess, what what do the court think of disclosure? This is what the court thinks. The court says that the over, overarching purpose is that people get through their procedure, through their court case quickly and efficiently and as inexpensively as possible. Right? right, inexpensively as possible. Yeah, that's right. And they <laughs> say that there in their core purposes on page two, mm-hmm. that we expect that the people will achieve the overarching purpose of family law practice by facilitating the just resolution of disputes according to law and as quickly, inexpensively, and efficiently as possible. So everything else has to be read with that, right? right? So the court's saying to people, don't saying to the lawyers too, they expect parties and lawyers, and this is written here as well, to keep in mind at all time the cost of each step. Mm. And how many people have we heard? Laura, who've spent twenty or thirty thousand dollars on disclosure and don't have enough money for a lawyer for their trial. So the yeah. court is aware that this is happening, yeah. and they're saying that the lawyers have to keep in mind the cost of each step mm-hmm. and in the proceedings, and whether it's necessary, and to avoid long, unnecessary, process-driven costs and unusual, unjustified use of disclosure. So they're just, they're expected to have a reason for wanting every document they ask for. All right, and you're quite entitled to say. I think I can get that. It's going to be take me a while, but why do you want it? How is that going to help resolve the dispute? And sometimes people, litigants, parties, they've separated, and they're just wanting to know. They're just mm. wanting to have a niggle. They just want to know, mm. and it actually isn't relevant to the case. So, Mum, if a listener is there right now and everyone wants to figure out this full disclosure business, they're like mm. their ex is saying, I want full disclosure, I want full disclosure. How, or, or maybe they're thinking, oh, well, I want full disclosure. What kind of questions should the, the listener be asking themselves today yes. to decide whether or not they should be going all guns blazing to okay. get this piece of information that's not fully been disclosed? What what questions should they be asking? I think that they should be asking themselves the question, does this achieve an outcome for this and get me out of this? Does this resolve the case? Do I need this document mm-hmm. to resolve the case? And to start with, to work out whether you need it or not, write down the assets that you've got. You've got maybe a house, a car, superannuation. You know, most people have that. It's some furniture, something in the bank, maybe. And then look with the house. What do I need to prove the value of the house? Well, you need probably a valuation. Yeah. Or, you know, what do I need to prove that I had this car before we got together? Well, maybe you should just have your old bank statement or maybe a, is it, is it registered in your name? And that's registration paper. Mm-hmm. And just there's the obligatory stuff we told you about, which yeah. is the you know the twelve months bank statements and that. But anything above that really is extraordinary and needs to relation back to an object or a or a decision. No, uh, has to relate back to an object and be relevant to the court deciding either what the value of that is or what your contribution to it was. Right. So if it's so, basically, they need to be thinking. All right, why what's my aim for getting this information? Is it to prove the value of something or is it to prove the contribution of something? Yep. Or is or, it because I was never allowed to see it in the marriage and I'm determined to see it now? Right. And 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 like you said, Mum, we've seen so many people. A lot of the people come to us after that they've spent all their money with mm. lawyers doing disclosure and they've just been, you know, that maybe their lawyer or themselves have just been crazy with trying to get all these pieces of paper and trying to get all this information together. They've spent $20,000 on it and then they don't have any money to do the actual trial or the actual mediation. So I can see why people get really stuck on this point. Mm. And I think that we, I think that's why this episode is really important to anyone listening. 
the word full disclosure is mm. arbitrary and yeah. it, and it should be Dis- your disclosure. Yeah, and their and discovery of theirs. Yeah. And I think sometimes too, if a person says, and I hear this, I'm not giving him my bank statement. I'm not giving her that bank statement. And when you drill down a little bit, they might have, I don't know, eaten out somewhere or bought something that they don't want the other person to know. Mm. But from the other person's point of view, where's this document they say? And you go, well, my client's not prepared to disclose it. Suddenly, ding, 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 the person thinks, oh, that's probably got money from his mother or, or her sister put some money in. Like, mm. And really, it's just your embarrassment, mm. you know. So, so I think you've got to kind of turn your pockets inside out, put up with the embarrassment, make yeah. your disclosure. Your two dual, <clears throat> you, the two things you need is for them to be satisfied they've got the whole story mm-hmm. sufficient to settle the dispute between you both. And you need to feel that you've got the, enough of the story mm-hmm. to settle the dispute and kind of think, would a judge need to see this document that you're getting all upset about? Mm. And when they ask you for a document and you go, well, excuse me, what's, ask yourself, is it worth not giving the document and causing all sorts of suspicion over the other side mm. or do we hand it over and just now, you know, do it? And then look, and I get that, that you're talking about, there's a lot of people going, well, I don't want to give them my bank statements. How rude, all that drama. Yeah. And but then there's the flip side, which is the one we get told about a lot more, is that the ex isn't doing disclosure. Yes. The ex is saying things like, oh, the business doesn't worth, is no longer worth anything. Or, no, I'm not giving you my bank statements. I don't have any other bank accounts. And so it's usually what we hear. It's yeah. the other side not doing disclosure. Right. So what do you say to those people? Well, the Family Law Act has been, what, 40, 50 years now. Mm-hmm. And... Not everyone shows every document they're required to do. But the valuation of a business is best conducted really by a valuer. Mm -hmm. You could get all the bits of paper from the business that you want. They might give it all to you. You could make of it what you want, but your evidence isn't binding. You're not an expert, unless you are, Mm. in that business. As far as that goes, just get a valuation of the business. You don't need to know the end. What about they're not showing you bank statements? Uh, If you're in court, subpoena it. Mm -hmm. If you're not in court, threaten to to go to court to subpoena it. Mm -hmm. But if it's beyond 12 months ago, then... What's the point? What What are you trying to prove? Mm. You know, it's different if there's a lump sum gone in in the last 12 months and out, like you, they might have got a payout or something. Mm-hmm. But really, why would you just want to know? I mean, one person I remember years ago, it was awful. There was a, he bought an $8,000 engagement ring oh. and wasn't paying child support. Oh. Um, but do you know what? He he didn't want to hand that page over. Oh, uh, yeah. And we finally got it. And then, but it didn't matter. It doesn't alter the case. All so, right? Their income is their income. Their expenditure is their expenditure. Post-separation, that's what it is. So can you go Can you go to mediation without full disclosure? What questions should people be asking themselves if they're facing mediation in the next couple of weeks and there's still no disclosure? What oh, questions? No, you said no disclosure then and then there's full disclosure. Oh, sorry. And there's... So no full disclosure. What questions should people be asking themselves before they go to mediation if full disclosure hasn't happened? Okay. They should be asking themselves, obviously, is it going to be worth it? But often it it will be worth it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't pull the pin on a mediation just because one or two bank statements are missing. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can imagine, you'll put a figure in yourself out of your head for that. The, so is that one of the things you rec- recommend doing? Go, well, if you don't provide that bit of information, I'm going to just guess that it's I reckon this? it's this. And yeah, make it on the high side. Yeah. You'd be surprised how quickly they flourish a bit of paper in front of you. No, it's not. No, it's not. I only paid 10000 Okay. But ask yourself, is that document so crucial that you couldn't make a reasonable attempt at a property settlement mm-hmm. with it? You know, and if it is, maybe you have to cancer mediation, but that's a big call. But there's so many people out there, mum, with manipulative and controlling exes, and they must think, I just know that that must be the piece that's missing, that's hiding all the information. And So really, you've got to sit down and go, how much is this worth to me? Mm. How much do you think they're hiding and how much is it worth? Like, that mm. must be hard. It is really hard. And, and I don't know that anyone's done any studies on it, but over the years I've heard, like recently, but over the years I've observed and other practitioners have agreed with me, other lawyers, 
that when a person comes out of an abusive relationship, coercive mm-hmm. control, abusive relationship, or any sort really, they come out of it. And for the first little while, they're terrified of the ex mm-hmm. and the, you know, their ex. They'll tell me how clever their ex is and how sneaky they are and how smart they are. And then, and then they go to a point where they're kind of reasonable to settle, um, happy to settle on pretty well reasonable. But, and then as more time goes past, a person who's being constantly abused like that gets pretty angry. It's be- and, and I'd say that's because they've finally figured out what yes. the hell they've been missing out yes. on in life, going, wait a minute, I've spent how long living with a person like this and now I'm, and that they get to that I'm angry stage. Absolutely that they do. And, and how does that affect do. the settlement? Well, it, it often means that they will not take the other person's word for anything. And they want Just to fair have, enough. Fair enough. Want to have the last word on it, and a little bit less inclined than someone who hadn't been in an in abusive, a, abusive relationship. A little bit less inclined to make a concession to like take mm. ten thousand down or whatever just to get it settled, because. And I think this is my this is my really strong belief that every time they give in or or don't push an issue with their abusive ex they feel like they've been abused again. Mm. So they're so anxious to not have that. And, you know, I mean, you, you hear of people where it's just a look from the ex-partner mm. that can dissolve them back into that. And they want to stand in their power. They and go, do. Screw you. No. This is the law. Show yeah. me a disclosure. I want it. Yeah. But what you're saying is that ends up actually backfiring it can. and derailing sometimes. Yeah. And what you need is someone who you can trust, mm-hmm. who, who knows what they're doing and and, you know, can say it with love. Yeah. But to say to you, you know what, you've put up with those shenanigans for the last 30 years or whatever, you can just give give this one last thing in and get rid of them. Because yeah. the thing that coercive controlling of exes want hmm. is to continue coercively controlling you. And if they can make you react through their failure to give you a document or by sending you a letter at five o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday where you can't get back to the they love that, that mm. you're having a reaction. So mm. so you need to try and put your business face on and make an appropriate if it if it's not that vital. And one of the things you can do is look, okay, so say the missing amount is thirty thousand yeah. dollars, right? You think he's got it in an account somewhere or she's hidden it at a mother's or whatever. $30,000. If you're talking about a property split of 50-50, that's $15,000. The other fifteen would belong to that other person anyway. And then you look at legal fees and how long it would take to get through and you mm. know, get mm. that. And when you do find the 30000 it may be that it's come from his side of the family or her side of the family, and it's actually regarded as a contribution on their behalf. Mm-hmm. And if it is, then their percentage goes up a little bit. So and at the more. end of the day, when you do the maths, Sometimes there's no difference. There is a difference in feeling you just don't want them to have the last word and feel mm. like they've won. Mm. But like I always say, you've been doing it for the whole relationship. Do it another one day or yeah. two days and then you can walk away. So domestic violence, cause of control, reason aside, that's mm. one reason why they might not do disclosure. Yeah. What are the other reasons why their exes, the listener right now's ex, might not be doing disclosure? Sometimes if the business is going badly, mm-hmm. they're ashamed. Okay, you've seen that? I've seen that. They okay. don't want to tell you because right. you'll see how bad it's gone Right, and they don't want to tell you. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. Or it's doing so fantastically well, they mm. want to keep that hidden from mm-hmm. you. But more often than not, I've seen them go badly post-separation yeah. because even uh, like partners, people in business get affected by their personal life. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's um, one thing. Yeah. Ashamed or uh, hiding. A lot of the time is if they're doing something with someone else or subscribe to things you might not think they should be subscribing to. <laughs> okay. uh, one, I remember we had no idea this person had been on holidays to Hong Kong and China until we saw his bank statements. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure to my client, that was the most significant piece of evidence we ever saw. You know, look, look, how could he do this? But the court, which, it's care. just a big yawn, isn't it, to the court? So the court the doesn't documents, care. Yeah, and it didn't make any difference. So so you have to keep trying to put your business life hat on. What would a judge need to know? What would someone who hasn't been through my history with this person need to have to to work out what the what the property pool is and how we should divide it? 
Okay. And then that leads me, to, and I guess the other, the other one that the reason people don't do disclosure is they're avoidant yeah. and they just don't want to get involved in the process at all. Yep. And I guess there's the other reason, and that might be why someone wanted disclosure for, from me. I could take quite some time because I hate it. I hate, <laughs> you procrastinate. I, I do. And I don't know where everything is because yeah. let's face it, we never go into a relationship thinking, well, I better keep all this tidy for our divorce. Mm. I, you know, I will separate. I, I need to keep a record. No, I don't think people do. No. So it's all like in the cupboard, in shoeboxes or whatever it is, or all over the place in your computer. Yeah. And, and you, you have to, in the middle of your grieving or in the middle of your anger or in the middle of the expense of a divorce, you have to sit down and instead Do horrible of work. Yeah, instead of eating chocolate or yeah. watching a, a soap opera, you have to go through your stuff. Yeah. So it's often it's just hard instead to find. Instead of eating chocolate, <laughs> Mum. I know I need I eat chocolate while doing that. Yeah, crap. there you go. But also I have also seen that sometimes lawyers can be unorganized. And they only ask bits for dribs and drabs every time the other lawyer asks. Oh, that's terrible. And then that way, then that person's only looking for stuff when the lawyer asks instead of being proactive and having maybe like our list and yeah. then having it all ready to go to give to the lawyer so the lawyer doesn't even have to ask. Yeah. And and too, sometimes I think if the lawyer is is a little bit distracted, I yeah. guess, or disorganized, there isn't a re- they can be quite reactive to the other side. Mm. And so the other side will ask for something really ridiculous, like a receipt for the sofa you bought on Facebook Marketplace two years into our marriage. Mm. And instead of writing, instead of ringing their client up and going, this is ridiculous, yeah. I'm just going to tell them no, mm-hmm. um, they send that letter off to the client with no context. The client has to find the document. And you'll find sometimes your own lawyer seems like they're acting for the other person. They're in cahoots with the other lawyer instead of kind of trying to keep your costs down. Mm-hmm. We we talk about this. There's ways to stop this happening because you are the expert in what happened to you in your life. Yes. And relying on that lawyer is it not a not the easy, the best way for it's kind of like you tell them something, they tell the other lawyer something, the other lawyer tells your ex something. Mm. And you can see that it's Russian whispers, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And the tone, sometimes you have people saying, oh, I couldn't believe the tone of the letter. She sent me, it's terrible. Mm. I go, well, who's the lawyer? Tell me, oh, no, that person always writes lawyer letters <laughs> like that. Wow. Yeah. The term full disclosure, and we've heard it so many mm. times, my ex hasn't done full disclosure. What about for going to court? What happens if you don't do full disclosure for court? Well, if the court thinks it was a document that was necessary, mm-hmm. they'll come down on the other side like a ton of bricks. Right. If they think it was unnecessary, They'll be a bit cross with you for persisting in asking for a document that either doesn't seem to exist or, if it did exist, wouldn't help your case. So can I just point this out? This is what I see from from an outside looking in. It really does come, come down to us. comes down to a psychological thing. Mm. So really, you've got to be looking at yourself and internally going, do I just want this document because I want to see what's going on? Or do I just want this document because I want to make them suffer and do more work? Or do I just want this document so I've got a complete tick, got to catch them all list? Or do I want this document because it's really important to help decide what the property pool is? Or do I really want this document because I can't face the idea that we're finished and we Mm -hmm. will have final property settlement and then we don't have to be engaged to it? in anything together ever again. Or do I'm going to hang on. Or do I want this document because I don't trust them with, like, I don't trust them as far as I could throw them and I Mm. want to know that everything is perfect Mm. before we move forward. That's really hard. It's very hard. So you need to be guided by that, those questions we said you should ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you ask yourself, am I, do I really just want this document to tick every box or whatever? Well, you can say to yourself, no, actually I need it because otherwise I can't work out who owned the car. I can't prove who owned the car or who paid the deposit or whatever. If, if you can't pin that document to one of the processes in calculating what the property pool is, finding out who put what in, finding out what your future needs are, then it really, what are you doing it for? Mm. You know, and so so you, we used to get, you get process-driven people yeah. right? and you get them in the profession as well. Mm-hmm. And they'll come to court and, oh, my God, I've never had to do this, but you see them come to court, the other lawyers, with big chrome trolleys with boxes and boxes of folders and it's all the discovery and disclosure. I'm sure the judge never looks at it. Yeah. I I don't know 
what they do. And, and I mean, I've been in practice for years and I've had some really big cases, but I've never mm. had to have a trolley. Mm. I'd be mortified. So I think that having it all in little folders, numbered and in plastic sleeves and all of that costs you a lot of money for a lawyer to do. And they'll charge for the secretaries to do it well. Mm. But why? But why? But why? Yeah. Yeah. So just put the nip that on in the bud mm. and remind your lawyer and yourself that the court expects, I'm reading now, the court expects parties and their lawyers to have a mind at all times the cost of each step and whether it is necessary. So, you know, and that includes which documents you ask. And to avoid unnecessary process-driven costs and unjustified use of court yeah. resources. So in other words, don't get stuck up in that disclosure and the term full disclosure, which isn't actually a legal term, is it, Mum, or is it just some word that's come out of I don't know nowhere? where it's come from, full disclosure. Like, and I hear people in court say, oh, he hasn't made full disclosure, but actually disclosure is, a, is the better way of thinking about it because otherwise you can trip yourself up thinking, well, this page is missing. How can it be true? Mm. You know, and mm. w- if the page before looks normal and page after looks normal and you reckon there's something magic in that page, the number of times my clients have taught that and when we get the page, no, it's nothing magic yeah. in it. And, we're, it. and we are 100% not telling you to avoid finding out all the relevant no. details for your case because we don't want to be liable for that. And this is general education. So always, you know, be guided by your lawyers. Mm. But mum, what you're saying really is you need to reality check what yep. your understanding of full disclosure is. You do. Now, question for you, Mum. They they haven't done all the disclosure you want, mm. but you go to mediation. Mm. Is that, will that, when you then, if it doesn't work out, then go to trial, like go to court? That's the next Sometimes, step. Sometimes, yes, yes. Or okay. another mediation we talk about. Or another time. mediation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's still worth going to mediation, even if this, inverted commas, full disclosure hasn't yeah. occurred sometimes. I think so. If there, You can reach a disclosure. You can reach an agreement about some stuff. Mm-hmm. And if there's, a, say, a business that needs to be valued, maybe you can use that time to work out a plan, a, an agreed plan mm-hmm. for how that gets valued and when it gets va- valued and all of that. I mean, if you do mediation and then you go to court, chances are first first thing the court's going to do is send you back to mediation. And there is such a thing as going to mediation too soon when you haven't properly absorbed the information that you need or the parties are too raw mm. in their separation to be able to make a proper agreement. So I, you've got to remember, I think with the, all of this we're talking about is you checking yourself. The, your ex won't have the benefit of this very loving but very serious talk with you. So they may want everything. And you know how you keep your costs down there? Give it to them as quickly as you can mm. and perhaps ask your lawyer or say to your lawyer, I, I won't send it to you. I'm just going to send it direct to them mm. and that will cut or I'll direct to my ex and that will cut down some of the costs. The court won't be critical of you for that. So uh, we get this asked, this question asked a lot. Why 12 months worth of bank statements for the last 12 months? Why? A, a year. Why? Well, I guess it captures, if it's it should capture like your annual in- insurance payments, mm-hmm. you know, what the electricity bill, you see a pattern of your electricity, and your water and your rates and all of that. Mm-hmm. So that's all most people look for. They, and also the, what the, I think the court thinks, the court, our lawmakers probably thought that most for most people, separation comes as a, a bit of a surprise, but you probably can feel it coming a lot. Most people feel it coming for a few months, mm-hmm. but seldom do people stay together a year after it's it's decided, you know. So they think that looking at a whole year will give them a better indication of how their finances operated. You know how Pedro said, you've got to know the the system. Yeah. And yeah. so that gives a reasonable idea. So the court is is not saying go and get everything from the day you're separated. Right. No. That's not right. Right. Yeah. And then the other question is, Mum, once you've done this, you've done all the disclosure, you've gone to mediation, yeah. maybe the mediation failed, yeah. you've got to do another mediation or you've got to start court proceedings. Do you continue to do the disclosure? Update. Yeah. So Update. you're con- constantly sending yep. more yeah. bank Here's statements, yada, so, yada. So to do it badly is to send a big wallop the night before the next mediation or the first court event or the next court event. Don't do that. No one's got time to read it. What is better is to do, say, every two weeks, mm-hmm. just do add to your documents. And, and people are setting up Google accounts 
now Google Docs where they keep it all there and all, they add it to and then let the other side know we've added some documents. Right. It's always up to date then so with live hyperlinks. There. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think that as much as anything else, as much as it makes it easy to read, but as much as anything else, what it does is stops people thinking there's something fishy going on. If you, I call it turning out your pockets, just literally give it to them, mm -hmm. you know, I used to call it death by disclosure, but you, you, uh, the stuff you're required to give, the stuff they've asked for, keep that current, keep it up to date so that there can never be any suggestion that you're dragging, dragging the chain. Mm. And if you have to make an allegation that they're not making disclosure, if you have to go to court and say, Your Honour, still haven't been able to get any idea about this business, they won't give us any document. Uh, you don't want the other person to be able to say, she hasn't either or he didn't yeah. either. You want to have clean hands. So you want to be doing everything perfect, yes. getting A pluses in the classroom yep. for doing all of the things. And look, I do understand, and we've had this question asked a lot, mm. I, I don't want to give my bank statements to my ex. He's a creeper. Yeah. He, he'll find out where I'm shopping and he'll mm. turn up there or he'll find out that I'm, I don't know, maybe they've bought lingerie for a new partner yeah. or, or maybe they joined a new gym. Okay. So what what how, what do they do then? Well, here's the thing. Your groceries, your gym and your lingerie mm -hmm. are not major, major expenses, usually I would have thought. I have taken, I've taken a black pen. Be, ask your lawyer about this, guys, and think carefully about it. But if you're concerned for your safety, have a look if you can look at your documents and redact some information so that he can see you bought groceries on this date and that date and that date, but he can't see where. Right. And remembering on these things, when you do your linked or your told records, that will show where you drive. So DV, if you're in a violent situation or stalking situation, the court will not be unhappy with you if you conceal that information on your disclosure. So not the amount, not the dollar amount, no. but just covering up the locations and places. Yep. And the court says nothing. The Act says nothing in the central purpose, uh, central practice direction is is meant to override the importance of keeping you and your family safe. Right. So that if you have to redact it, the other side might jump up and down, but you say, no, nah, he's a stalker or she's likely to turn up and I'm not revealing where I go. And if anything's concerned you about that, you can call you can call one eight hundred respect or you can call thirteen eleven fourteen lifeline and you can get some support over that. Yeah. Now mum, so basically what, what this episode's really trying to encapsulate is that this term full disclosure mm. can potentially derail your settlement. Yeah. And if you don't double check and reality check the reason why you either want the document mm. or the reason why you're not giving the document. Yeah. You can cause yourself more money yeah. and more stress. I think this might be stretching a bit. If you say to someone, I want you to renovate the house, renovate could be anything on a sliding scale. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. Full disclosure. I want full disclosure. We can't settle because we haven't got full disclosure. That can mean anything and, and probably does to each person. Instead, perhaps you say, I can't settle this dispute. It, write it down, I think. I can't settle this dispute unless I have, insert the name of the document, mm -hmm. and then read that out. If it makes sense, then you can insist on that document. But if it sounds silly, like, I can't settle this dispute unless I see exactly how much he spent on that trip to Melbourne. Is that really true? Mm -hmm. You know, so, mm -hmm. so just... It's got to be significant and you've got to take into account the costs of law, uh, law legal costs, getting to court to get the perfect outcome, the risks of court, because you might get in the witness box and get all tongue-tied or the, he may or she may turn up and looking like a woman in a floral an dress and sobbing, looking like an angel and the judge completely, you know, takes her side. So you, there's the uncertainty of court, there's the expense, the time delay. Mm. So really... Uh, I think don't cop out by saying I can't do X because I haven't got full disclosure. Try and narrow it down. I can't do X because I haven't got this receipt. Oh, really? Can yeah. I get it some other way? Yeah. 
But that also, just by by taking the word full disclosure out yeah. and saying, getting your lawyer to go, okay, well, this is the one piece of information we need to understand what the property pool is, or this is the one piece of in- information we need to understand what your contributions were after the separation. That is what you need. Yeah. And and if it's the other person making an assertion they've made post-separation contributions and don't give you the documents, hooray. Unless you show us the documents, it didn't happen. So we're going to assume that we're not going to add that in. Okay, well, that's Prove great. it or lose it. So yeah. you're saying if you've got an ex who's asserting that they spent all this money or they did all these great grand things mm. that entitles them to all of these extra percentages, but they don't provide the disclosure, you'll go, well, if you don't provide disclosure, then... There's no evidence. Then I'm not... I'm no. not. So, so that can actually work to your yeah, advantage. it can. It can. Okay. You just write and say, well, if you, you know, then... It obviously didn't happen. We don't. You we know. got no proof. If you could have, if, if you had that document, you should have shown us. And if you haven't got that document, it didn't happen. Right. Now, we're getting to the end of this episode. Hmm. What happens in court hmm. in front of a judge when someone hasn't done any disclosure? Well, nowadays it doesn't get to the trial without any disclosure usually. So in the first early days, first of all, the judge will make sure It's only one of you who's not making disclosure. Otherwise, you'll both cop it. Mm -hmm. Uh, If one person's not making disclosure and it's brought to the attention of the court and it's a willful failure to disclose, then the court may well set the whole hearing, either fast track it to be heard with an imaginary number Mm -hmm. because, you know, you can't, you'll have to put your best guess forward Mm -hmm. or, or they might even say that the person who isn't making the disclosure can't proceed with their response or any documents until they do make that disclosure. Right. But it's tricky for the court. But the full court said in Weir and Weir that the, the court should be robust in the way that it deals with people who don't make disclosure. So chances are the court will give you a big whack of what they do know about, mm-hmm. you know, to make you sure you're you a larger disadvantaged. Portion. Absolutely, yeah. So you'll be advantaged by them not doing disclosure in a way. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. It'd be better if you knew exactly what it was, but the court can take a wild guess and they're on your side because they've got, they're the ones who've done the wrong thing. Right. So for anyone who's out there right now who is stressing out about disclosure or they're coming up to a mediation, they're coming up to court or whatever it is, Mm. maybe sit down and do a little reality check, write down on paper, what, you know, the pros and cons of dragging your heels on things, go and speak to a lawyer, go speak to a psychologist, try and get past that block. And mum, if there are documents that they really do think are necessary and they're not getting them, we've got an episode called DIY Disclosure yes. where mum downloaded her brain of <laughs> gems that she uses <laughs> to hustle and do discovery to find that, right. that All stuff. My secret. So I'll put that link in the show notes yeah. so you can find the show notes below where you're listening or you can go to www.thedivorcecourse.com.au backslash blog. Find this episode and then in the show notes, there'll be the links there to the yeah. other episode. Just remember, how is this document going to help me work out what I'd eat so I could get a settlement, yeah. so I can go to court. And, and, and when they ask for a document that's ridiculous, mm-hmm. ask yourself, is it worth not handing that document over to derail the whole property settlement or would it just give it, mm. just give it to mm. them? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mum. And good luck, everyone. I know you probably, if you're listening to this, you are 100% frustrated, guaranteed to be frustrated. And probably what Mum has said probably doesn't take the frustration away, but hopefully it will change your outlook and your Mm -hmm. mindset and set you on a different path. That's right. It helps, I think, to reframe what it is because you can you can be stuck in victim mode forever yeah. with the other person having the power yeah. because they won't give you disclosure. Yeah. Whereas if you are proactively making the choice, and proactive making the choice, then it takes the power so away going, from them. That person's a baby child, a child, yes. child man or a child yeah. woman. They're obviously going to misbehave. So I'm just going to make best with what I've got and walk away. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm going to say, oh, I think the similar property or a similar business sold for Six hundred thousand dollars. Therefore, I say your business is worth six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and if you don't agree, you better send me some documents to prove. <laughs> so please definitely go and speak yeah. to a lawyer. They were this fighting is words. <laughs> general education, but of course, you know this yeah. is just to give you guys a little understanding of this nonsense of the word full mm. disclosure. Mm-hmm. Disclosure. Thank you, Mum. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Bye, bye, everyone. <laughs>